Today on Hearts of Heroes, as flooding from a monster hurricane overtake a rural North Carolina county, a frantic dog owner whose home is underwater desperately prays her small pet can be saved. I say, look, this is the third day I call and my dog is back there and I want her out of there. Pender County, I think, was at one point over 70% underwater. But this heroic team won't let a wall of water stand in their way. Then, a dramatic situation unfolds as horses face rising floods. We thought of everything, but the water was just too deep from where we needed to go from where we were at. When distressing situations happen, rescuers are always there for our furry loved ones, too. Hurricane Florence made landfall in North Carolina in September of 2018. But once it hit land, it slowed to a snail's pace. That allowed it to drop up to 40 inches of rain in some places, which caused immense inland flooding. Now, rescuers were called in from across the U.S., but it wasn't just humans who needed their help. It was our furry friends, too, all in need of a hero. Take a drive down any rural highway in Pender County, North Carolina, and you're sure to get that good old nostalgic feeling for the heart of America. Pender County is one of the largest counties in the state of North Carolina. It is a diverse mixture of rural agricultural land, and then we also border the Atlantic Ocean, so we have a touristic beach site as well. As manager of the county animal shelter in small town Burgaw, Jewel Horton knows just how special this area really is. It's a diverse community. I mean, it's everything from you know, the rich and famous to the people who love to live off the land and go to church every Sunday and everyone's their neighbor and friend. We are out in the rural area. Everybody knows everybody, so, because people seem to live here a long, long periods of time. Maria Santiago Bass was born and raised in Burgo and is all too familiar with one danger that often threatens the tight-knit community. Pender County is no stranger to disasters. We've had a few smaller hurricanes over the years. And then in 2018, we had Hurricane Florence. In mid-September of 2018, a massive Category 4 storm named Hurricane Florence was barreling straight toward North Carolina. And even though Pender County is well over 30 miles away from the coastline, there was a mandatory order for people to evacuate. Maria was unable to bring her beloved pet with her. Scotia is a family member. <laughs> Scotia is like a daughter. Wherever we go, she went. If it's a birthday party, Christmas, Thanksgiving, whatever the case may be, she's with us. But this one time, she didn't go, and it was a disaster. So Maria begged relatives unable to evacuate their homes to check in on her beloved pup. I had family members that could come here. I had a key in a certain spot. They knew how to get in there. Inland flash flooding was predicted, and that's exactly what happened over the following days. As Florence bared down on the Carolinas, it was downgraded to a Category 1. The storm slowed, and over the next three days, heavy rains caused nearby rivers to rise to catastrophic levels. The flooding was just extensive. Pender County, I think, was at one point over 70% underwater during Hurricane Florence and completely cut off by all the adjoining counties. When Hurricane Florence made landfall, it had thankfully dissipated from a Cat 4 to Cat 1, the winds gusting to just over 90 miles per hour. But this also meant that Florence was now moving at a slow crawl, dumping a substantial amount of rain all across the Carolinas. It also meant that from there through the mid-Atlantic, everybody was on high alert for inland flooding. Thankfully out of the danger zone, 130 miles away, Maria realized that her house was in the flood zone and her poor pup potentially stranded inside. Scotia's a part of our family, so like losing her would be like losing a family member. I'm not hearing anything about the condition of the house at first. And I was asking my aunt, how was the area? She said, no one can get out. Much of Pender County was now essentially a lake. And as floodwaters kept rising, little Scotia was trapped. The flooding so vast, all agencies were inundated with rescues. The county did hundreds and hundreds of helicopter 
rescues and some boat rescues as well. Some of those did not allow pets. When large-scale disasters strike, it's not unusual for small communities to need assistance from outside agencies. Harold's equipped for any type of situation. In fact, some teams are trained specifically for animal rescue. With the disaster so widespread, authorities had to reach out for assistance. Thankfully, the Humane Society of Missouri, led by Jessica Crampton and Chad Gard, who is a former Marine, were ready to jump in and help. We're trained in uh, swift water, rescues, search and rescue operations, and large and small animals. Even for these veterans, the scene was shocking. There were roads that were gone completely from the water. There were trees that were, were down. There was propane tanks floating in the water. It was awful to see it. We located two dogs that were floating on a pallet that we, we were able to rescue. We were able to rescue some roosters that were up on, on a fence. There were some cats that we were able to rescue out of trees. You have no idea what you're about to be involved in. The chemicals and stuff that's all mixed in the water. I mean, you have a lot of things going through your head and preparing for your safety and, and what all you could in, encounter. But it was now day three, and those filthy, toxic floodwaters were still too high for Maria to return. Little Scotia was still trapped, and Maria couldn't do anything but keep calling the emergency line and wait. So I say, look, this is the third day I call, and my dog is back there, and they asked me for permission to go in and get her. I said, yes, please, by all means, just go get her. Chad and Jessica were quickly dispatched to rescue Little Scotia. When we went out, we always had a local animal control officer with us that kind of that knew the area because you couldn't see the roads and you couldn't see a lot of the houses in the neighborhoods. And when the team arrived at the location, that turned to worse. All of the houses in that neighborhood, there was only approximately six to eight inches of the rooftop showing. We couldn't even tell which side the road was on. You couldn't tell what color the home was. The first two days were unsuccessful due to the floodwaters being so high. We couldn't locate the house. It's very disheartening knowing that there, there's a dog out here and we're unable to locate it. Coming up, these brave rescuers aren't about to give up on Little Scotia. We knew that overnight the water level had dropped substantially, so we were, we were pretty positive going into this day that we were going to be able to find the actual residents. And then larger animals needed larger rescues. It was neck deep. They'd swam for several days. We now had an issue and a problem. We were seven miles from land in any direction, so we had to find a place we could safely put the animals. But first, something to help you stay safe. In the event of pending or potential flooding, there are some precautions you can take to ensure your pet's safety. If you can't take your pet with you, move all your pet's belongings to a safe, dry place and make sure they are wearing the proper identification in case they get separated. You can even keep a toy nearby to help them stay calm. Pets are family too, so let's make sure they're taken care of and have the best chance of making it through a disaster safely. In early fall of 2018, Burgaw, North Carolina was underwater from the floods of Hurricane Florence. While first responders were rescuing humans, animals, chickens, horses, and dogs were also in the need of a hero. That's when multiple animal rescue teams were called in to help. Think of your normal neighborhood and the water's clear up to your rooftop. You can't pick out a house out of anything because you're not from the area, you don't know. For two days, Jessica Crampton and Chad Gard had attempted to find the house where they knew an 11-year-old Maltese named Scoshi was stranded. The water had started to recede. When we got to the neighborhood, you could see the first numeric of the address we were given. But as the crew made their way closer to the area, they experienced another setback. We're en route to the, to the neighborhood where we knew Scoshi was at, and at that point, the boat broke down. We were kind of dead in the water. We were a little ways still away from the neighborhood. With no time to lose, the team comes up with a new plan, muscle power. You're in these dry suits that they don't breathe. It's hot. So we all start paddling. And it was a long paddle for a mile. Miraculously, they finally made it to Scotia's house. You could see part of the windows and some of the front door. As we paddled up to the house, um, we were maybe 100 feet away and we heard a dog bark. Pretty excited at that point hearing the dog bark. We were hopeful that it was Soshi, but regardless of who it was, we knew we had found a dog that we were gonna be able to rescue. The hard part was, was now getting the dog out of the home. 
Chad determined the best way of entry was to breach the door. It was difficult, considering the force of the water. They also couldn't see what was behind the door or under the water. One, two. So there was a porch on the front of the house with a roof that overhung the top, and we hung from the roof, and we kicked the door in. Jordan! Here, Jess, I'll hold the door. In any rescue, there is always a number one rule. Care and planning are more important than speed. Never put yourself or other members of your team into a situation where rescuers will need to be rescued too. Inside that house on the other side of the living room was a couch floating on the water. I was able to see this little white dog floating on a couch across the room. He had about 12 inches of air and that was it. So here was this little dog wagging its tail. Everything was floating around in the house. I was able to make it over to the dog and recover her and then pass her on off to Chad who got her safely to the boat. Scotia was finally rescued. Coming out, coming out the front of the boat. Now safe, Scotia was a surprisingly good spirits after being trapped alone for three days. She was taken to Jewel Horton at the Pender County Animal Shelter. Scotia was a little wet and dirty, so Scotia got a little spot cleaning, so she got the five-star treatment. Maria's husband told her the news he had received by email. And he was like, oh, man. And I said, what, she dead? He said, no, she ain't dead, she just wet. So I grabbed the phone from him, and I seen her in the rescue worker's arm, and I seen four inches of the house, and I just started crying. Once those floodwaters receded, Maria was finally able to reunite with Scotia. This is Scotia. Come here, Scotia. Come here. Come here, you want to show them your dance? It was joy. I grabbed her and I hugged her and I kissed her <laughs> and I cried and held her and rubbed her and rubbed her and she was so excited. Her tail was just wagging. Both of us were excited. The reunion was bittersweet. Maria's life would never be the same since she lost everything in Hurricane Florence. No one can imagine, like, not having nothing at all, no kind of support. You hear about these things, but until you live it yourself, you, can, you just can't imagine. Like, it's still overwhelming. But she does have little Scotia, and for that, she is forever grateful to the heroes who don't wear capes but show up when needed. A hero to me is someone that could withstand all the water that was here and go in and save these animals. I heard Jessica say, I'm not giving up yet. And that really touched me because she didn't. She got my baby out of there. Coming up, another grave animal emergency unfolds nearby, testing these seasoned rescuers to their limits. Horses that are in floodwaters are extremely stressed. They've drank flood water, and flood water is just a toxic mess. Everything from your household chemicals to sewer waste. Despite its seemingly delicate name, Hurricane Florence unleashed a fury on North and South Carolina in September of 2018. Rescuers were clearly stretched to their limit, and it wasn't just humans who need to be pulled from the water. Thousands of animals were trapped too. They were all in need of a rescue, and thankfully, there were plenty of people with a big heart and the right training to help out. Animals are so innocent and so loyal. I just have this deep, compelling measure to be there for them when they need it the most. Jewel Horton runs the Pender County Animal Shelter and is also a trained rescuer. She grew up here, and she knows a lot about the community that is now underwater. A sheriff's department called and said that they were receiving multiple calls about a pair of horses drowning on Copperhead Lane. But with so many animals needing to be rescued, resources were spread desperately thin. Local agencies knew that they were going to need help. Thankfully, there's Code 3, a professional animal disaster response team. When the call came in for the team to assist, they dropped everything and drove straight to the disaster. Code 3's technical rescue specialist, Brett Huff, was called in from Longmont, Colorado to help support the local agencies. After several days of rescuing animals, he then teams up with Jewel to save the two distressed horses. We got there and there was horses standing in flood water. It was neck deep, they'd swam for several days. We, we now had an issue and a problem because there was no place to go. We were seven miles from land in any direction. The team quickly realized that trying to swim the horses to safety 
wouldn't work. Horses that are in floodwaters are extremely stressed. They've drank flood water, and flood water is just a toxic mess of everything that's in its surroundings. They're shocky, they're hypothermic. So swimming them four miles back to the boat landing was never an option. And you can't drag them behind the boat very far because they will, they will drown, they will die. As Jewel looked around, she had an unusual solution. There was one porch nearby that was still above water. I do not know who owns the porch. I did not know if I was gonna get in trouble for it at the time, but I felt like in the moment it was better to ask for forgiveness than permission. And now the team had to figure out how to coax the two horses onto the porch. You can't move up to a horse. There's safety mechanisms to run away. Uh, runaway in flood water can be a tragic event. As they approached with extreme caution, one horse became frightened. The chestnut mare panicked and kind of swam away. She kind of got tangled in the fence. Once the team freed the chestnut, they now had the challenge of getting her to the porch in deep water. Horses are obligate nose breathers, so they have to have their nose above water so they can breathe. Hang on, right, she on my right side? She, yeah, I'm on right, I'm trailing right. If he had not held her, she would have drowned. As the team went back for the second horse, things were finally working in their favor. So the, the black and white paint mare, she was less shocky, more confident in herself, more confident in strangers handling her, and she walked on the porch pretty easily. And then the chestnut mare had a little trouble with the steps. Her just being tired. I mean, it's a lot of weight to pull up out of the water up steps, which is not something horses are trained to do. But she had a chestnut mare moment, and she threw all she had into it. She made it up the steps onto the porch. The rescue mission was a success. The horses were out of the floodwaters on a stable, strong porch. But they were not a danger yet. Coming up, a race against time to keep the horses safe. Someone was going by every day to make sure that they were getting fresh food and water. But first, another safety tip. These horses found themselves in a dangerous situation, one that no one wants to see their large animals in. To help prevent your pets or livestock from experiencing dangers during a flood, always move them to higher grounds where at least they'll have a chance to make it. Remember, they need our help to stay safe. So let's do all that we can to ensure their safety. Through the amazing work of the rescue teams from Code 3 and the Humane Society of Missouri, a number of pets were saved from the floods in Burgaw, North Carolina. That was a very exciting moment. I'm pretty sure there was some cheering in the video because we were really not sure how that was going to go in those moments. And then shortly thereafter, the, the team showed up with some hay. Um, I think they started using some coolers they had found floating to be water troughs and put bottled water in it for them. But the two ponies were now stranded on a small porch and the water wouldn't recede for a long time. They were soon nicknamed the porch ponies. I think the horses were on the porch about 10 days, so someone, whether it was our team, the veterinary team, or you know the community was going back every day to make sure they were still on the porch and that they were getting fresh food and water. Two of the volunteers who showed up daily to help with the porch ponies were Chad Gard and Jessica Crampton, the rescuers who had saved little Scoshi. We'd go out there sometimes twice a day. We'd provide buckets with fresh water in them. We'd bring fresh hay out there every day, and we hung the bags up so that they weren't in the water. And my partner, Jessica, would check their legs to see what their skin looked like, make sure that the swelling wasn't getting too bad. When the floods were finally clear and the horses were healthy enough to get on their way, there was one more problem to solve. Once the water dropped, it was actually a very steep set of stairs to come down. The horses were like, yeah, no, we're not doing that. So the guy came back and actually built them a special ramp so they could exit the porch. It would take one final heroic act to help these horses. They banded together and built a ramp for the horses to get off the porch. When natural disasters strike, Circumstances don't always allow people to take their animals as they flee to safety. But we can all agree, the high level of training that many of our rescuers undertake for these animal missions deserves our deepest level of gratitude. I've been doing this for a very long time. The, the motivation that does it is the end results. We, we, we can't help everybody, but the ones we do help greatly appreciate it. So we try to do the best we possibly can do. When 
life throws us tragedies, first responders are always there to help, and we cannot thank you enough. But animals don't have a voice to share that appreciation, so I'll do it for them. Thank you, first responders and rescuers, for everything that you do. And thank you all for watching. I'm Ginger Z, and we'll see you next time.